Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. so destroyed they actually think that this is normal this is not normal you know it's not normal to be out here with trash all over the place you got bullet holes in the front stop you got people passed out either drunk or on drugs this is not normal this is a bad condition so why do we live like this the brother's going to show you just give him a few minutes show him why we curse so he can understand the importance of knowing who you are and more importantly what we can do to lift these curses because that's what he's teaching to himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Israelites are God's chosen people. They're made to be above all people. And that's all throughout the Bible. That's not just one scripture. Give me Amos 3 and 1. We're going to get a whole bunch of them. I'm going to go to the New Testament and get them there too. There's the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. And that's why we went to slavery, because God had an agreement with us and only us. So when we broke that agreement, he sent us into slavery. He says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Because when you read in the Old Testament, God destroyed the other nations. So were they equal in the Old Testament? They destroyed them back then. So what make? Why would they be equal today? Give me Romans right. three and one. Let's find out. Let's go to the New Testament. I'm gonna get two scriptures out of the New Testament to show you. Ain't nothing changed. God don't change. Romans chapter three, verse one. 
What advantage then has the Jew? So the Jew is talking about these first three tribes, but it's really talking about all of Israel. Keep going. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because unto them were committed the oracles of God. Because guess what? We're the only one that's got God's commandments. When you look at the movie uh, with Charleston Heston, uh, The Ten Commandments, all nations didn't go up to the mountaintop with Moses. It was only the Israelites. Only the Israelites had the, the, the covenants in the agreement. Get Hebrews 8 and 8. New Testament. Now the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Jude. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. So the new covenant is Christ, when Christ died, because the first covenant was when he sprinkled the blood over them, when they got the laws the first time. So the new covenant is only with the Israelites. So let's go to the kingdom of heaven. So because I know what people say when uh, Christ died, the game changed. We're about to find out. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. Description of the kingdom of heaven. And it had a wall, great and high. It had 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels. And names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. So, sister, who's getting into the kingdom of heaven? Based on that, who's going into the kingdom of heaven? Exactly. That's why you got to know who you are. Because in the church, they lie to us. They tell us everybody going to heaven. And guess what? Everybody ain't going to heaven. That's right. You know because you got to have a ruling class in heaven and you got to have a servant class. Right. So these other nations right now, we serving them. But guess what? The shoe going to be on the other foot. Right. Let's get that. Let's get that in Isaiah. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a prophecy about the kingdom of heaven and how it's going to go down. Get Isaiah 14. First get Acts, in one. Acts 1 and 6. We're going to get that first. Start at 3, go to 6, and now I'm going to show you the prophecy. Watch this. Acts 1 verse 3. This after Christ died. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days. He was walking on the earth after he died for 40 days showing people that he was alive. Because guess what? They didn't have the internet or television back then. So he had to walk around and show people that he did rise from the dead. He was on the earth for 40 days. And being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He talking about the kingdom of heaven. Verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying. So when the disciples came to Christ, they asked of him, saying, what are they asking? Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they asked him what? Are you going to put Israel back on top? Why didn't he say everybody? Because the Bible don't say that. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. The land is talking about the kingdom of heaven. You're going to see, keep reading. And the stranger shall be joined with them. So the stranger is talking about what, your Chinese man? Your Arab man, your Indian man, your white man, they're going to be joined with us. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So we're going to take them captives whose captives we were. You understand that, sister? So right now we're in captivity. A lot of us don't know that because we think we're free. Can you leave this country without paperwork? So now when you was on Master Charles' plantation and you wanted to go to Master Jackson's plantation, what did you need? Paperwork. You need some paperwork. Okay, so now your last name, where's your last name come from? Your master. Your master. So what would they say? That's Master Jenkins. That's Jenkins nigga over there. So when you got free, you put my last name, Dick. Mr. O'Connor, 
What is your real name? Malcolm. Malcolm X. Uh, is that your legal name? As far as I'm concerned, it's my legal name. Have you been to court to establish the show? I, I, you know, I didn't have to go to court to be called Murphy or Jones or Smith. Excuse me for answering you this way. That's if all right. a Chinese person were to say his name was Patrick Murphy, uh, you would look at him like he's insane because uh, Murphy is an Irish name, uh, a European name, or the name that uh, has a Caucasian or, or a white background. And a yellow person, Chinese is a yellow man, and uh, he has nothing to do or no connection whatsoever with the name Murphy. And if it doesn't look proper for a person who is yellow or Chinese to be walking around named Murphy or Jones or Johnson or Bunch or Powell, uh, I think it would be just as improper for a black person or the so-called Negro in this country, as we're taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to walk around with these names. And therefore, he teaches us that during slavery, the same slave master who owned us uh, put his last name on us to denote that we were his property. So that when you see a Negro today, who's named Johnson. If you go back in his history, you'll find that he was once his grandfather or one of his forefathers was owned by a white man who was named Johnson. His name is Bunch. His, his grandfather was owned by a I white man point. that was uh, named Bunch. Would you mind telling me what your father's last name was? My father didn't know his last name. My father got his last name from his grandfather, and his grandfather got it from his grandfather, who got it from the slave master. The real names of our people were destroyed well, during was slavery. Any, was there any line... Uh, any point in, in the uh, genealogy of your family when you did have to use the last name, and if so, what was it? The last name of my forefathers yeah. was taken from them when they were brought to America and made slaves. And then the name of the slave master was given, which we refuse. We reject that name today. You mean, you, mean to... you won't even tell me what your father's supposed last name was or gifted last name was? I never acknowledge it whatsoever. You understand that? We still in captivity. That's what we don't understand because what you go to church, what does it mean to be saved? What do they tell you it means to be saved in the church? The best of your abilities. Because the Israelites, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna, let me give you two scriptures first. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in what of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. So God said we had to serve our enemies in the want of all things. You understand that, sister? For yeah. food, clothing, and water. I do. I'm about to get ready to give her. Okay. I got one more scripture for you, sister. Okay. Let's get this Luke 1 and 68. And so forth our enemies. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. So God only redeeming his people. So we've been lied to where it says God is, is uh, Christ is redeeming everybody. That's not in the Bible. The Bible says his people, talking about the people on this sign right here. You're not going to ever read in the Bible where God is saving everybody. It has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So salvation is being saved from your enemies. But our problem is our people don't know who they are and they don't know who their enemy is. That's the problem. Our people have been completely assimilated. They ain't nothing but Oreo cookies. That's what they are. They have all the customs of the so-called white man. Everything that, he, that he's given them, they take it at hook, line, and sinker. We don't know who we are. We don't know that we got our own things that we're supposed to do and not supposed to do. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. 
Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.